Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock, which means it's time for a review show revisited. Now, this is what we do every Friday evening here at Magic TV. And the idea is really simple. I revisit reviews that I have done on either a Craig and Mylan review show, a five by five, or a review show special. What I do is I go back, I take those tricks, put them out to the test in the real world, and uh, I try to see if that changes the review that we gave them. Does it make a bad trick better? Does it make a, be uh, a really good trick worse? How does it affect the actual grade? And we always do these out in the real world. And then there's always a commentary track over the top. So you can see my thoughts when I'm out actually performing this trick in the real world. And it's only been going on for about four weeks now. But everybody has been giving us some amazing feedback, which is super awesome. And I want to thank you for that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, so today we are going to be looking at three tricks, two that I do, one that Ryland does. And without further ado, let's have a look at the first trick. So the first trick we're going to be looking at was marketed by Big Blind Media and created by Leon Montier. And this is the birthday deck. Now, if you don't know what the birthday deck is, the idea is very, very simple. Uh, you kind of do a fake tarot reading style thing where you have a deck of cards and uh, you, you get somebody to pick a few different cards and you can kind of give them a reading. And off the back of that, you've proved that uh, you could not prove that's the wrong word but off the back of that you you can now show that you knew what their birth date was before even meeting them because you predicted it with the cards that you put into the deck it's kind of a really interesting plot now one point that I actually made when I reviewed this is I'm not kind of really into cold readings I know that a lot of people do them and have great success with them and that's fine I'm not a cold reading kind of guy. I couldn't sit there going, right, okay, so this card tells me uh, that you're going to twist your knee in the Alps or something. I, it's just not my style. Um, so I said in the review that probably what I would do is I would take a different presentational approach to this. Now, that is what I have done. So I've kind of gone down the route of helping them find their lucky card. Do you have a lucky card? Do you have a favorite card? Don't worry, I can help you find your favorite card. And then kind of go down that, that route and then at the end, um, you know, obviously the way they find their lucky card is through um, telling me their birth date. And off the back of it, the cards that they end up with, um, I prove that I knew, their, I, I knew their date of birth before I even met them. Now, I said in the review that this was a good trick. I said it was a good trick and I stand by that. I do think it's a good trick. The one issue that I had in the review is whether or not the method was too transparent. And what I mean by that is, with the particular trick, at one point you've got to take three cards out of the deck for no real reason. And I kind of made the point in the review, Do is that an issue? You know, you don't really have a reason. You kind of, I think the reason is, hey, you know, it, it could have been that, you know, I just took three cards out. And you'll see when you see the performance. And I was worried that whether that would be an issue or not. Having now performed it in the real world a few times, I can tell you straight away that this is not an issue at all. It happens on the offbeat. Uh, the spectators just uh, selected three cards and it's kind of like you're furthering the presentation. So it's totally not an issue. And the fact that you kind of then give the deck a false cut afterwards means that it's it's just a non-issue completely. And that was my one issue with the trick. It is a really strong trick. When you, I mean, think about it from a spectator's point of view. From a spectator's point of view, you've never met them before. You don't know who they are. And you can show that the three cards that they end up uh, they ended up within the deck, first of all, are the only three red cards in the deck, which is kind of a crazy thing anyway. It's like a, um, a Red Hot Mama or a Chicago opener on speed that the only three cards that they've picked are the three cards that have got a red back and all the rest of the cards are blue. But then you kind of go one step further and you go, but not only that, but those three cards have got your date and month of birth on there, even though I've never met you before. It's a very strong moment, it really is. Absolutely deserving of a of a, a deck in its own right. You know, pocket space is an issue. 
when you're actually going out and performing, do you want to actually take this particular deck? Does it add to your repertoire? I think it does. I think it's a really strong trick. Um, so I went out and I performed this at a gala dinner and I was performing it in the mix and mingle situation. So before they actually sit down for the meal, they have um, sort of pre-dinner drinks. I was performing it in pre-dinner drinks to, I think, two or three people. And um, yeah, what I like about it is the, the presentation is very engaging. Um, the hook, you know, I talk on this channel all the time about the hook, what you're gonna do, what you're gonna say to hook people's attention. The hook is really interesting. So let's have a look at this, uh, at this performance footage so you can see how it plays in the real world. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of swing back into the studio and we'll set up a uh, commentary track. And you look awfully glad about that. Wes, so uh, do you play cards? A little bit. So you know what one card is compared to the other. Yeah. Now here's a question. As a magician, I have a lucky card. Right, okay. Do you have a lucky card? If not, I'm going to make your own lucky card for you right now. No. Okay, I'm going to get your lucky card, okay? Um, and this is going to be based on your date of birth. Now, we've never met before. I don't know what your date of birth is. Forget about the year. We're just talking about the actual dates. So, first of all, what's the date? Not the month, the dates. Like, I'm the 12th. What's your 28th. So, the 28th was made of a 2 and an 8. So, I'm going to deal two cards here for the 20. I'm going to deal eight cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for the end. Twenty eight. If you were the first, it would have been completely different. Exactly. What's the month? So that would be January, February, March, April, May. So you have three options for a lucky card: the Jack of Diamonds, the Queen of Hearts, or the Nine of Diamonds. Those are your three choices. Now, in all honesty. I mean, I couldn't have known it was the 28th of May. In all honesty, you didn't even need to tell me that. What you could have done is just, I could have just gone through here and just randomly taken out uh, some cards. And it would have had the same effect on this one, But it's not as much fun as doing it the way I'm about to do it right now. So, 28th of May. Now, here's the thing. Out of those three cards is the one that stands out to you. Which one? The Queen of Hearts. And that's a free choice, right? Here's the thing. If I told you... In all honesty, that I had, I knew that you would end up with the Queen of Hearts before you even ended up with the Queen of Hearts, would that be impressive? What about if I told you I had your card tattooed on my arm? Would that be good? Would it be impressive? Good enough to get around the board? Yeah, yeah. Look, it's got here, your card, your card is tattooed. No, 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 but there's an arrow. Oh, there's an arrow. It's pointing to the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> which, is, which is good, which is, which, is, which is a good trick, right? Yeah. It's not a miracle. <laughs> but it's a, it's a good trick. I'll tell you what is a miracle. Yeah. I've never met you. I didn't know that you were born on the 28th of May. I didn't tell you that you were the three cards in this deck were red back. I put them into the chair before I even met you. Yeah. And you managed to end up with the three red cards. Not only that, but what's really interesting is I put May on the back of that one, two on the back of that one, eight on the back of that one. You ended up with the 28th of May. And what's exciting, that's never worked before. So I mean, we got, <laughs> we got to share this magical moment together, which is, which is, which is very, very well, you saw the performance there, you saw the reaction from the people I was performing it for. They loved it, they absolutely loved it. I did this probably three or four times in the night and uh, it got great reactions every single time. Gotta be honest, I've not performed it in the real world up until this point. Uh, and I'm finding this quite interesting. A lot of the tricks that I'm performing for this Review Show Revisited series, I've, although I've given them good reviews and my intention was to take them out into the real world, I haven't. Um, and so I'm going out and performing tricks that I've kind of thought about, but I've not actually gone and gigged, if that kind of makes sense. And it's forcing me to kind of do that. And uh, I'm finding the, you know, these are actually staying in my repertoire, which is great. It's just giving me an even bigger repertoire. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just a really good trick. You saw the reactions. The reactions are great. People love it. I'm going to actually um, run the same footage again now. But as normal with the review show revisited, I'm going to put a commentary track over the top so you can actually kind of hear my thought process and, uh, and what I was kind of thinking while I was performing this trick. So the first thing that I want you to see about this trick is I really like the hook line, the whole concept of, hey, do you have a lucky card? Because most people don't. So then you say, well, I'm going to help you get a lucky card. I really like that moment. I really do.
Uh, now notice I'm casually giving the cards a, a, a shuffle. Uh, the thing with this trick, you don't have to focus on the shuffling, but I think it is nice to throw something in at the very, very beginning. So you've set that whole thing up with the hook line, and now what you're going to do is you're going to use their date of birth as per Liam's instructions uh, to get three cards out the deck. Now one thing that I want you to learn about this, uh, from this performance is the importance of changing the script and ad-libbing based on what the audience does. So for example, in this trick, uh, one of the cards that he deals out is a Queen of Hearts. And when I ask him which card stands out to him, he says the Queen of Hearts. Now, in all honesty, I said which card stands out because I thought it would go for the Queen of Hearts because it was the most desirable card. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I have a Queen of Hearts tattooed on my arm in a place that you can't see it unless I bring my arm up. And it's tattooed there for a very good reason. A lot of the time, the Queen of Hearts comes up when you ask people to name it. And I've got the Your Card gag with an arrow pointing to that Queen of Hearts. So, at this point... Um, in a second, you're going to see in the trick, when he names Queen of Hearts, I'm just going to go on a complete tangent. Now, I could just carry on with the script, but why would I not go, hang on a minute, if I told you I knew your card was the Queen of Hearts, would that be good? And then I kind of go into the tattoo thing. And that happens more often than you would know. The amount of times that something will happen to me in performance that will allow me to deviate in a completely different direction to make the trick better. And this is a perfect example of that. And it's something that as performers we need to learn to do. We need to learn to adapt to what happens during the course of the performance. And, and the problem with being too heavily scripted is that you're never going to deviate. You're always just going to stick to the same script. And so when things like this happen... You, you can't take advantage of them. Outside of that, I mean, obviously, it's almost a self-working trick. But this moment at the very, very end, when you talk about how, hey, if I told you these were three red cards, would that be good? Would that, that be a coincidence? Because you, I've never met you before. And I like reiterating that. I've never met you before. I didn't know your date of birth. That would have been impossible. You know, and you kind of build them up to think that it's going to be three red cards. And then when you show that it's actually got their date of birth on it, it's an incredible finale to a trick and just a really good routine that's well worth getting. So there you go. You know, it, there, there's nothing really else to say. It's a fantastic trick. It's a great premise. It's very, very easy. It allows you to focus on the performance. And the one thing that I thought would be an issue was absolutely not an issue at all. So, you know, I'm going to uh, I'm going to up this because I think I gave it uh, a, a good mark, but I think it deserves a better mark having now performed it seven or eight times. It's definitely staying in my repertoire. And I also think having performed it, it would make a great show, a great trick for parlor as well. I really do. I think it'd make a really good parlor trick. So yeah, I'm going to add an extra 10% onto this trick. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. You can get it from Big Blind Media or all good magic dealers. So the second trick that we're going to be looking at right now is Socks by Michael Hoyt and Vanishing Ink. Now, Socks is something that I have done for a long time. Uh, when I first got Socks, I fell in love with the premise. I fell in love with the hook line. I fell in love with the idea. And, and, and I think that's the most important thing about this trick. A lot of the time, we should strive to make our magic relatable. You know, a lot of people can't relate to a deck of cards or a rope or four coins. So how do you make your magic relatable? Well, one of the ways that you make your magic relatable is by bringing people, you know, bringing something into the presentation that people can relate to. And this is a perfect example. You know, just that opening hook line. Does anybody here ever lose their socks? Because I lose my socks all of the time. In fact, I don't think at this point that I've got any matching pairs of socks. So many people can relate to that. You know, it's, it's just something that happens in every country all around the world. So right there, you've got a hook that people can relate to. But then you bring out these pictures of socks. And, uh, and if you don't know the trick, the whole idea is that you show two packets of cards and you say this is pictures of your sock collection and none of your socks match, as you can see. And you get them both to pick a sock, so to speak. You get them both to pick a sock. Um, or you get one spectator to pick uh, a pair of socks and uh, you kind of build it up to would it be good if these two socks matched and they were the only pair that matched and they said yes 
and then you turn it around and they don't match, but you show that you've got the prediction on your feet, which is a really cool moment. It really is such a very funny moment. And then you show that all of the cards have actually matched up. Now, I've got a few thoughts on this. Um, and I've spoken to a few people about this. Now, the first thought is, I did a video on this channel called Improving the Socks Trick, and you can go and check that out if you want to. And on that video, I talked about the force of the socks trick not being particularly good. Now, I didn't mean it wasn't particularly good because it obviously works for Michael Hoyt. It obviously does because he, you know, he performs this trick live um, on the tutorial and I, I can tell that he's done it many, many times. And I'm sure he never has a problem with it. I do. The timing force that he suggests gives me massive problems because it always, when I first started doing this, I, I just wasn't hitting it. And if you don't hit it, there's kind of no out. So um, I, I, did a, I came up with my own way of actually forcing the socks, which is based on a very old force. And um, I put that improvement, or in my opinion, an improvement, onto a video called Improving the Socks Trick. And the reason I bring that up is because in the video footage you're about to see, you can see I actually do that force. Um, so that's something to bear in mind. The second thing that I want to bring to your attention is I've had a lot of magicians say to me that uh, this can't be done walk around. And absolutely it can be done walk around. I do this walk around more than I do pretty much any other environment. I have done it big tables, I have done it table magic, and it does work. The problem is if everyone's sitting down, in order to see my socks, I have to bring my leg high up in the air. And that can be a bit of a problem in a restaurant or something like that. Uh, whilst if I'm doing walk around, I just have to bring my trouser leg up and they can immediately see what's going on. So for me, it's, it's great walk around, but people are going to say, oh, but you need a disable. You don't need a disable. You just need some decent audience management and somebody who can hold their hands out. And you're going to see that in this video as well, because this is something that I perform walk around in the actual performance. Um, so there's that. Now, the final thing that I've had people say to me is they think that the force of the socks um, and the revelation of the socks on your feet should be done after the fact that the socks have paired up so you know the presentation of this trick is look none of these socks match you pick a sock you pick a sock look they they don't match but they match the socks on my feet and now every single one of these cards match all the way through and I understand where people are coming from that their, their point is that the prediction of the socks on your feet is a stronger moment. And I get that. The reason I disagree and the reason I do it the way I do it is because that final moment brings everything full circle. When you do the sock thing and you show the prediction on your feet, they think the trick's over. And then you kind of say, but do you remember? I told you at the beginning, I don't have any matching pairs of socks. But if I was a real magician, I absolutely could pair up all of my socks. Let's try this. And it kind of brings the trick full circle, if that makes sense. So that's why I like doing it that way. Is it a stronger moment as the socks being on your feet? No, but I don't play this. I kind of play it as an encore, if that kind of makes sense. Like the prediction of the socks on my feet is the main trick. And then, and then you have this as an encore. Now, the only other thing that I'd say is the socks trick does come with a card revelation on the soles of the feet. So the whole concept behind this is you can have someone pick a card at the very, very beginning. And when you've done all of this, you can go, by the way, what was the name of your card? And you can show that it's on your feet of your socks. I tend not to do that, to be honest. I think that's overkill in this routine. I think it just takes away from everything else that they're seeing. I like to keep this very self-contained, but obviously the option's there if you do like it. Anyway, with all that being said, let's have a look at socks. You're gonna see me performing this outside a corporate event. Um, they've just broken up after a long day of doing whatever they do at corporate events. We're outside together and uh, it's getting a little bit late. It's an open bar, so some of them are a little bit challenging, let's say. But let's have a look at this performance of me doing socks. <laughs> I'm going to show you real magic. Now, the reason I know this is real magic is because this is something that is in every single person around the world has experienced. Doesn't matter where they live, doesn't matter how, many, how old they are, everyone has experienced that moment in your house when your socks disappear. <laughs> Come on, we've all been there, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, look, I've got to the point right now where I have just like a, uh, a drawer My socks are of, gone. of socks. Oh, no. I don't have, so I, I'm gonna show you something about socks. Uh, you're gonna hold both hands palm up. 
you're going to hold both hands palm up as well. Okay. <laughs> the drink is fine on the floor, but in all honesty with you, the more no you drink, the better this looks. Okay. <laughs> Not me. Nothing can help me. The drink. Right. Okay. So what I have here is I have uh, cards and I've got socks printed on them. Wow. And and the reason I and these are for my own personal sock collection. Um, and this oh, is yeah, this nice. is this is the thing about socks. Now the important thing is this. And I'm going to do this. I want you to see. I don't know how many we have. I think we have about 20 pairs of socks. But I want you to see that every single one of these pairs of socks mismatched. That they're mismatched exactly. And I'm, I'm going to go through this and show you. But I'm going to show you this. And I promise you, this is the thing that you're going to remember forever. Because this, in magic, we call this a prediction. And I want to catch is, him. This is I the thing catch him. that you're going to remember. So is that fair? We, we have like tons of different yeah. pairs of socks. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah. Okay, good. Confirmed. So, confirmed. You <laughs> hold, we're going to put that there. We're going to put that Getting there. Close Don't move it. <laughs> What's your name, my friend? What's your name? We know it. Okay, come on. Okay, come on. I'm going to turn these over like this one at a time. Okay. Like this. And as I do, anytime you want to, just say stop. Wherever you say stop, the one that we can't see is the one that you're going to have. Okay. Stop. Stop now. There, right there. Yeah. Hold your hand out nice and flat. Yeah. We're going to take that one right there. Don't look at it just yet. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah. We're not going to use any of these. Mm -hmm. um, we're just going to put those there. Uh, yeah, you can hold that for a minute, but mm -hmm. just leave them like that. Now we're going to do the same thing with you, okay? So I'm going to turn these over like this, and I'm going to turn them over one at a time. Whichever is the one that you do, uh, you whenever you want to stop, the one you can't see, that's the one we're going to use. Do you want one more turn over, or do you want to stop? Right? Are you sure? Okay, we're going to put that there. Do the same thing as Vinna. You're doing great. And can you hold out your other hand as well? Because I don't know how many pairs of socks we got. We looked at them, they're all odd matches. There's about 20 pairs of socks. Here's the thing. If I told you guys, and you could have stopped anywhere you wanted to. It's quite complicated. If I told you that I knew the exact pair of socks, that, if they matched, if they were the only pair that matched magically, would that be good? If, I, if these two socks match, that would be good. Yeah. That would be good if these yeah. match. Yeah. 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 Lift up your hand. That would be good enough to get a big round of applause, right? Yeah. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Check it out. One, <laughs> two, three. I'm not that good. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been great. I'm not that no. good. But if I told you six oh. months ago I knew what these socks would look like and I knew exactly where you'd stop, would you believe me? So if I could yes. prove that to you, would that be good enough to get a big round of applause? Yes. I didn't know six months ago, but I didn't know this morning. <laughs> no, seriously, I did know this morning because I said to you earlier on, I don't have any pairs of socks that match anymore. And I said these were for my own personal socks collection. <laughs> and I got dressed this morning. Uh, uh, and, and if we lift up this one, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that would be. That and, and hang on a minute, hang on a minute. This one right here would look something like. Wow, which, which is great, which is great, which is great. And that's, that's awesome. But that's not real magic. Hold You're your hand out. Too. Hold your hand out. This is real magic. <laughs> I'm going to take these back. Let me just put them there. Hold your other hand out as well. Yeah. Hold that hand out. Hold that hand out. This is, you, you saw these pairs earlier on. Yeah. Well, none of them matched. This is the thing everybody in the world wants to do. When I snap my fingers, now every single pair of these socks all the way through match. Every single sock now matches all the way through. And normally, wow. this is very, the part very, where every single very, person yeah. gives me a big, oh, wow. huge, oh, massive round. Amazing. That's actually pretty good pre-preparation. Pre -preparation. Well, you had to put those socks on sometime, I did have to put the socks on. <laughs> so there you go. That's uh, Socks by Michael Hoyt. An absolutely fantastic trick. Um, you know what? I'm upping this grade to 100%. We re I reviewed this on a 5 by 5 a little while ago. I'm upping it. I'm giving it 100%. Uh, socks is one of those tricks that you can perform on stage. It'll work really well on stage. It works really well parlour. It works close up. It works in pretty much every single environment. And although I've never tried it, I'm pretty darn sure that it'll work really well in a kid's gig as well. Um, it it's, it's just highly recommended. It really is. I absolutely love it. And you can get socks for every season now. You know, myself and Ryland reviewed the Halloween socks a little while ago. And uh, they've got Christmas socks. They've got socks for every occasion. So, uh, you know, I, and I have all of those sets. So at Christmas, I bring my Christmas socks out. At Halloween, I bring my Halloween socks out. Uh, it's, just, it's just a really strong routine. It's one of those routines that I kind of think of as a banker. 
And what I mean by that is you just know that you're going to get a really good reaction. Even if it's a bit of a tough crowd, even if it's a bit of a challenging crowd, you know that you're going to get a really good reaction. Um, so, yep, I'm going to I'm going to give it 100 percent. Let's now just have a look at the same footage that we saw before, but with a commentary track. And then once we've done that, we'll move on to the final trick that we're looking at in this week's Review Show Revisited. So one thing that I talk about on this channel all the time is the importance of a hook line. It's especially important to this sort of event where people have been drinking, they've had a hard day, you need to grab their attention immediately. I love the hook line that's built into socks because you've got this whole moment of saying, hey, this is real magic, I know it's real magic because I'm gonna to talk to you about something that everyone can relate to. Have you ever had your socks disappear for no reason? And everybody relates to it. Then you get into the meat and bones of the trick. Now I talked earlier on about how you can do this walk around and this is how you do it. So basically, I like to have two spectators hold their hands out. One spectator I'm gonna put the cards onto and the other spectator as I show the cards so that they can see that they're all mismatched I, uh, I i put them onto the other spectators hands now it's very important to do this display at the beginning and again another thing i've spoken about on this channel over and over again is the importance of having a routine go full circle so you start with something something happens and then you end bringing everything back to what you said at the beginning and that's why i love having it so that the, the socks being matched happens at the end of the routine and it's not the prediction that happens at the end of the routine. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is while I'm dealing these cards, this is about 10 to 15 seconds of dead time. And what I don't want to have happen is I don't want to have it so that um, uh, I'm just not talking. And I think that's a really important lesson, which is whenever you're doing something procedural, you always have to fill that time some way. And you need to look at your performances. And this is why it's so important to video your performances. It's really important to, to look at the dead time in your act and figure out what you can do about that so um we're now going into the force and if you want to learn more about this force and how i specifically do this check out the improving the socks uh trick by craig petty uh video which you can find on youtube just by searching but for me this is a much better force to use because it's sure fire i'm never going to get into a situation where i'm not hitting it 100 percent of the time and notice i've switched now so that uh, so that each person has uh, has got their own card. Now, notice I've brought somebody else into play here. I've brought a third person into play, and I've already set up for the finale. And I love that time misdirection, and that's another reason why I like it. So that uh, you have the match up at the end because you've got that time misdirection. I've done. It's finished. I can now focus all my attention on on the revelation here. So I build it up as per. Uh, Michelle's original uh, instructions. Hey, would it be good if they matched? They haven't matched. I cannot tell you how strong this moment is. They start anticipating it around about now, but then you bring this to their attention. And it's such a great revelation because it's not a card trick. It's not a coin trick. It's unlike anything they've ever seen before. You're going to come down, and, and this is, uh, as I said, this is why I like performing this mix and mingle because I can just pull my uh, my trousers up or my jeans up and I can immediately show that the uh, the socks match uh, and it, it's a lot easier to do that in this environment than it is uh, sort of table magic or a table or something like that so they think the trick's over and genuinely they think the trick's over and then you've got this lovely kicker ending and the time misdirection is what makes this because you show that all of these packets didn't match you give the cards to someone to hold on to and then at the end you show that every single sock all the way through matches and notice that as i deal each card i get faster and faster and i'm building up a crescendo building up a crescendo building up to the excitement so that at the end for the finale you're going to be guaranteed to get a big round of applause. So yeah, it's just a really wonderful routine. But I think if there's anything we can learn from this, learn about the importance of managing your audience and managing your spectators. Okay, so the final trick that we're going to be looking at today is Papa Rabbit Hits the Big Time. Now, myself and Ryan reviewed this about a month and a half to two months ago now 
on the Craig and Ryland Review Show. And you're going to see some footage in a bit of Ryland performing this out in the real world at his residency. So uh, uh, you're going to see... You're going to see him performing it to a uh, kind of a family group. There's kids there, there's adults there. And I think that's where this trick shines. Uh, both myself and Ryland loved, loved, loved this in the review show. And for good reason. You know, sponge balls, they're a classic for a reason. They always get a great reaction. You've got that sponge ball moment that very few tricks have. Where you open up your uh, when the spectator opens up their hand and they're expecting to see something and they see something completely different and they freak out it's why magicians continue to do sponge balls over and over again because of that reaction right there there's very few tricks that get that reaction well uh sponge rabbits or papa rabbit hits the big time in this case you've got exactly the same moment You've got that wonderful moment of they're convinced that there's two rabbits and then there's, sorry, there's convinced they've got one rabbit and they've got two. And then literally a second later, they're convinced they've got two rabbits and they end up having, you know, dozens of rabbits. Uh, and it all makes sense presentationally as well. And especially with the, the Daryl routine, where you've got the little rabbits that have birds on the other side, so you can do a bit of transposition at the beginning. Don't overlook that because that's a really strong moment. It really is. Uh, when you have the, uh, the the boy rabbit and the girl rabbit, and they actually uh, sorry no the boy uh, the rabbit and the um, and the bird, and they change places and then they change back again. That's a nice lead into the trick because it's kind of a sucker thing. You show them the trick, they kind of know what's going on, but then you actually expose how the trick goes uh, it works, and then you proceed to kick them in the head. I mean, what a lovely moment, right? Um, and and then it just gets better and better and better from there. So if you haven't bought this, it's relatively inexpensive and it's well worth buying. It takes up very little pocket space and it's something that you can do anytime, anywhere and get a really great reaction with. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at the footage of Ryland doing this in the real world um, so you can see how this actually plays. You know magicians, you make birds and rabbits appear. If you had to name one, which one would you name? Rabbit. Bird. Well, I just take an invisible thing and shake it. And yeah. Now, what happens if you said rabbit? Well, I just walked into the other one. Shake it. And then you get a rabbit. Now, there's something that I can do. Look, I'll just take these, shake. The rabbit hops across the invisible bridge, the bird flies across. <coughs> And now I've got the rabbit over here and the bird over here. Do you want to know how it works? Yeah. yeah. They're, both, they're both rabbits uh, and they're both birds. Uh, uh. But I can do some real magic. I'll grab this bird and then I'll grab the other one in the other hand. And then I shake the, bird, the rabbit flies across. We'll just, we'll just pretend for now they're both rabbits as well. Pretend for now they're both rabbits. So they're both rabbits. Look, I'll do it in your hand. I grab one. I'll do it in your hand. Close it tight. Turn over. My goes. Into your hand. Wow. <laughs> look, look, close your hand. And you know what happens when two rabbits in love are in a dark place? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of rabbits. <laughs> they get married. Now babies. Look. Look in your hand. <laughs> so there you go. You can see the reactions that, uh, that you got from that trick. It really great reactions. There's very little to say about this trick. It's a really good trick. We gave it a good review. It deserves every single percentage that we gave it. Like I said, it's just a super commercial trick. The magic happens in the spectator's hands. There's no angle issues. It's relatively easy. Uh, it can be done anytime, anywhere. Um, it's an engaging plot. It's got a great kicker finish. It's just, it's just a great trick. If you are a commercial close-up worker, it's absolutely well worth having in your repertoire. Uh, we're going to look back at that footage with Ryland 
and uh, I'll do a commentary track over the top so you get my thoughts um, uh, while he's actually performing the trick. So just a couple of thoughts on this trick, because if you've ever done sponge balls or something like this, this is a relatively easy trick to get your head around, but the props are just so well made. I quite like the opening production, I quite like the opening sequence of, hey, would you like me to make a rabbit or a bird appear? And you know what, when I first started performing this, I was worried that um, it would be obvious that it's just a bird that you turn around and it's a rabbit that you turn around. But having now performed it a whole bunch of times, that's not the case at all. Um, people are genuinely fooled by this first phase where you make the rabbit and the bird change places. They're genuinely fooled. As long as you don't fumble with it too much and uh, you know you get the turnover kind of fl uh, seamless, it gets a decent reaction. But what's nice is it allows the routine to build. So you have this first phase and then you kind of expose how the trick works, which is a bit shocking for people because they never see that coming. And then you start going into the much stronger phases. I also like the fact that Ryland first starts off by making um, the rabbit disappear from his one hand and then goes into his other hand. And then he does it again in the spectator's hand. Uh, because for me, I think that's really important. People can't understand the impossibility of something going into their hand unless they actually see it first of all. So I, I, I do think, again, it helps the routine build. Now notice his hand is going into his pocket to grab the final load as he's focusing all attention on the vanish. He then focuses all attention on the spectator's hand and then immediately says, look, why don't you squeeze these again? Picks it up. And he has a motivated reason to do that. Uh, I think that's really important. A lot of the time when people are stealing stuff out of their pockets, they do it at precisely the wrong time. You need to make sure if you're stealing something that the focus and the attention is somewhere else. Because when it's somewhere else, you're never going to get caught. So there you go. Papa Rabbit hits the big time. Absolutely well worth buying. Highly recommended. We gave it a good review. It continues to get a good review. It's a killer. If you work in the real world, absolutely pick one up. Let's wrap this up. So there you go, guys. That's another review show revisited in the bag. I have to be honest with you. These videos take a long time to put together. Uh, probably longer than pretty much anything on the channel. It was a lot easier when we did the ramp videos on a Friday because that was just a piece directly to camera with this. We've got to go out and get footage in the real world. We've got to, which can, which can be a bit of a problem, can be a bit of a time consuming thing. And then the edit is a lot longer as well, especially with all the commentary tracks. So I want to know if you guys enjoy this, if you want me to carry on doing it. I have an absolute blast doing it. Ryland has an absolute blast doing it. But let me know. This channel is all about you guys. And we want to be presenting the type of videos and the type of content that you guys want to see. So if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please let me know in the comments down below and like the video. And uh, yeah, don't forget, I'm going to be back again tomorrow on Saturday with four videos. Over the weekend at Magic TV, there's four videos each day. Four on a Saturday, four on a Sunday. That's eight videos over a weekend. So we're going to have uh, on Saturday... A short at 2, a live at 6, an honest trailer at 12, and at 9 o'clock a uh, talk magic. Then on Sunday, we're going to have at 12 o'clock a Q&A, at 2 o'clock at shorts. At 9 o'clock, we're going to be a review show revisited. No, we're not. A review show special. Sorry about that. And then at 6 o'clock a live. So there's a lot going on this weekend. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from Magic TV.